I met a gypsy. Be a starter. Look, I got hurt and uh, I went and got my medical card. I watched way too many buddies get. Dude, get, right? get you know get on the opiates and have a real hard time getting off. I mean, I had a hard time. I had to lock myself in a hotel room for a week and just sweat it out and miserable. And that's but you know that's life. That's what you got to do. And those you know painkillers are awesome when you need them, but then there becomes a time when they're just a crutch and you don't need them. And weed for me was a huge help to get off of that stuff. And I mean, the amount of nerve pain that I was going through for months at yeah. a time, like just calmed me down and made me sane without giving me the. Or felt you know felt like it was get, making me sane to calm those nerve pains, and I wasn't taking opiates. And then like once you're like, you don't need weed, you just stop. It's not it's not like yeah, it's not like uh, you, there's no real chemical dependency on yeah. it. You might form a lot of bad habits, but see, it's way. I mean, you just stop. For me, I can just whenever you know. Yeah, dude. The um, I definitely don't have to name names, but like I think that whole opiates thing is like that's such a like no one's really ever talked about that shit like i know a few of you guys went through like super heavy shit and like dude like literally lives got ruined in the motocross community that it seems like no one really ever wanted to go there again like i always sort of half even thought it was weird that there wasn't like a uh, reach out for support to those guys like seemed like the industry sort of blackballed some dudes straight up and it was like fuck man these are kids that have been like in this sport forever and it's like as soon as there was some some of that sort of stuff going on it's like that's it we don't talk about them we just they, they're, they're done like there wasn't really much help it seemed like yeah yeah i mean i don't know if uh, it's rough man i mean these kids you're young you get hurt like you know you're you you're probably get your first taste of a painkiller if you're a motocross kid at like probably you know under under the age of 10 or at least under the age of 14 you know yeah. like you're gonna break a bone at some point before that and then you know you're gonna get on something or you're gonna be in the hospital where you're you know you're getting it and then kids you know grow a tolerance for it and then back in when i was young i just think it was way more accessible and then nobody really thought of it as something bad and you know, if you, if you stub, not if you stub your toe, but say you just sprained your ankle, like doctors wouldn't really think twice to just hook you up with a little prescription or something. And you wouldn't even think of it as being bad. Yeah. So you just take them, make you feel better. The next thing you know, like people just like them too much. Yeah. And it's, it's just extremely sad. And I hope, you know, it's, it's not like, Oh, like, I don't think, you know, smoke weed, that's the answer to it. But that for me, when I had this gnarly, crazy nerve pain, that was the only thing that kept me like sane I feel like mm. like was just and it helped me so everybody's different I don't know it is what it like but I and I don't, I don't know at the same time like what do you do when like dudes are breaking bones all the time you're just not going to give them stuff like I got mm. buddies that like damn near break their neck like and the doctors won't give them like they won't like help them with anything mm. so it's a double-edged sword because they got some people that are dying and in need of pain like pain medicine which I still to this day think that you need it yeah at times that's what it's there for but it just some people latch onto it and abuse it and yeah it is really sad that we kind of dump these kids out but then at some time too you know you got to want to get off of it yourself and mm. that's the i think that's the hardest thing you know for for people that are locked in it you gotta you gotta want it for yourself knowing some of the dudes that went through that stuff because you had like some of those boys were like your friends too right like what was that shit like even seeing that stuff go down well it's just just you just see them like you just kind of th- see traits and then unfortunately you know some people that end up you know stealing stuff and some people would end up you know just be able to like maintain their habit but just not really you know it's just it's just sad man it's everywhere and mm. it, it's not just racers it's, yeah it's, it's everything and it's just a really really sad thing and hope everybody you know hopefully everybody can figure it out soon and maybe you know hopefully there's some something new that helps with pain that doesn't mm. have addictions but i'm sure it's just it's a double-edged sword if you're given something that helps you're gonna probably end up abusing it at some point dude i always, i remember like because i mean i broke tons of shit as a kid and we'd have like uh panadol fort you could get here and then uh endones which are like they're like a, a opiate but just nowhere near a strong man like i'd have endones when i'd break shit and then i remember having a, an oxy in america one time and i was like dude this shit is a fucking different deal like that felt like a hospital drug like not like a at home broken on the couch drug and like people were just going through them and i'm just like this is a fucking heavy deal that like they can just give you that shit 
yeah, it's the, it was, uh, and that, that seemed to be the thing that took everybody down mm. or, you know, just took a lot of people down. It seemed like, you know, from people that were just, you know, friends that didn't ride people that did ride. It just, it just was a struggle, you know, mm. and that's a hard, hard thing to break. And I just hope, yeah, hope that kids, younger kids learn from it. But then at the same time, like, you know, it's, it's cruel for the way doctors are treating people right now that have injuries because mm. they're not giving them shit now. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, yeah, you, you know, your leg's hanging over there. Here's, um, here's, here's, you know, here's a couple of here's, Advil. Here's five Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Like, you know, like, you, somebody could just, like, I literally, I compound fractured my wrist and, like, they gave me, like, a three day supply. Of, of like, <laughs> and then like you have to come back and I'm like you realize like you know I know this I know this deal I know like <laughs> yeah, I've, been here before. I've been here before and I know like I'm really gonna be hurting in three days you know I'm not taking these to abuse these I'm taking these because my hands was over here and sticking out of the skin <laughs> <laughs> like come on bro like come on like yeah, but it's I don't have a migraine or it, I, don't know, I don't know the perfect solution I guess yeah, yeah I guess it's good that they do that and you have to monitor and make it a real pain in the ass to get to get relief but then yeah what do you do it's rough i don't know i don't, don't want to keep talking about it. Yeah, i hate going yeah. down this road everybody's you know it's probably affected a lot of people in different ways and yeah i got no answer i just hope hope everybody feels better yeah if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang